I invite you to please stand. Please be seated. Welcome, welcome to everyone. Thank you for being here um, with us at First Lutheran at Margie's Church. And thank you for coming. Some of you came a long distance to be here and some of you are our neighbors right here. So thank you for being here to honor Margie today and a little bit later in the service um, we'll have time when you can um, share stories if you'd like I'm you know I understand there are some funny stories um, that you can share and or even just a just a thank you um, or some kind of a remembrance just an I love you even sometimes those are just nice to hear so we'll we'll do that a little bit later in the service and also at the end of the service today um, you are all welcome to uh, we'll be processing in our cars um, out to the Gorman Town Cemetery so that's kind of outside of Frazee you probably know better than I do where that is um, that'll be a new one but I'll be going with you too and so we'll be going out there after the service and then um, 
and then we'll all just gather there too. So we begin. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he is the source of mercy. He is the source of comfort so that we can be comforted and that we can comfort each other with that comfort that we receive from God. God's the source of that to help us. If today is a sad day, as you remember mother and, and grandma and great-grandma, aunt, friend, you have that source of comfort with each other and from God, always. You know, when Margie was baptized, um, and that would have been probably a long, long time ago, um, but when she was baptized, she was given a promise. And that's for all of us who are baptized. We're all given that promise that in baptism, we believe that we have, that we have died and, and also been risen, been washed, been risen to a new life. Just as Jesus was um, in his baptism and also in his life, resurrected to new life. We believe that we too, who are part of that family of God in our baptism, that Margie has risen to new life, has had a resurrection with Jesus. That's one of the promises that we hold on to, that promise of grace, that promise of new life that we believe that Margie lives in today. And one of the one of the psalms that Amber is going to read, so I would invite Amber to come up if you want to now, but one of the psalms that she's going to read is, a, is also a psalm of promise. It's, we're all going through right now some pretty hard things just in this life. Um, but this Psalm 23 that Amber's going to read, it gives a lot of hope for how we can be all guided, how Margie's guided through this life. Amber, thank you. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, and thank you, Amber, for that. May God be with you all, and let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember before you today, Margie Ann Linderman Zuberbeer. We thank you for giving her to us, to her family, to know and to love as a companion in their journeys here on earth. In your boundless compassion, console those who mourn and give them your aid so that they can see in death a gate to eternal life. That we may continue our journeys on earth in confidence until by your call we are all reunited with those who have gone before us. This we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A second reading that the family has chosen is from the book of Revelation, um, the last book in the Bible. It's from Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, 
The home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega, the beginning and the end. This vision is a word of God. Margie Ann Zuberbier, nee Hinshaw Minderman, was born on December 12, 1936, right here in Detroit Lakes. She was a daughter of Stanley and Catherine Gerda Hinshaw. She passed away on November 6th at Oak Crossing Nursing Home here. She grew up in the Detroit Lakes area. She graduated from Detroit Lakes High School, and on December 12th, 1954, Margie was united in marriage to Alvin Minderman. To this union, five children were born. They made their home in Purim, and Margie was a stay-at-home mother caring for the house and the children, and she and Alvin then retired to Vergas, and Margie worked as a home health aid, activities aid at Purim Living, and she sold Avon, and she loved going to card games and spending time with family, and flower gardening. And she's survived by her husband, Ron Zuberbeer, her children, Jerome and Diane Minderman, Suzanne and Charles Bachman, Patricia and Philip DeWeese, nine grandchildren. So how does this work? Fifteen and a half. So somebody's expecting, right? Fifteen and a half, right here. (laughs) God bless you. There's the half. Ah, great-grandchildren, and many nieces and nephews. And Margie was preceded in death by her parents, Stanley and Catherine Henshaw, her husband, Alvin Minderman, her sons, Michael Minderman and Thomas Minderman, and her brothers, Harold, Merle, Kenneth, and Robert Henshaw, her sisters, Rose Henshaw, and Patricia Estby. She had a lot of people um, who were there to meet her in heaven last week yeah well right now it's time for stories for your stories and you are welcome if you'd like to share a story if you would like to come up here um, you can do that sometimes um, I think it records better you know we're we're we are just gonna record this for you if you want it so um, you can come up here and talk or Sometimes, you know, when I do this, people just feel a little bit more comfortable if they just stand up right where they are. So you can do either either one, whatever you would like to do. But I would invite you now, if there's anyone who would like to share a funny story, a memory, um, a thank you, and I love you, um, to Margie. And this is the part where I tell one of my stories about when I was growing up around here, which was 100 years ago. And being out with my grandma and grandpa, you know, we had one of the places here that I was at with them where we didn't have have indoor plumbing. So we had an outhouse. um, And we also had, um, we had a pump in the front of the house um, where we got, like, the best water, you know. I mean, if you wanted to go bathe, you had to go in the lake. That's what you had to do. But, um, but for water, we would go out to the pump. And in order to get any water out of the pump, you had to prime it. I don't know if anybody is that old that remembers that, but you had to, like, take some water, and you had to pour it into the pump, and then you would, you know, prime the pump, and then you would get this really delicious cold water that would just come up from really deep below. But... All this is to say, I'm kind of asking if someone would just prime the pump. Because my experience is that if, if one person kind of starts talking, then it kind of starts getting other people to share some of these stories about 
being with Margie, being over to her house, or maybe being at one of the parties, or some of the things that you learned from her. So. That is a sweet story. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like you all mean a lot to her. What are some of the other things you remember? That's just a beautiful image, too. And I love it when minnows just nibble on your feet. Yeah. Thank you, Amber. It's nice to hear the kids' voices. <laughs> I miss them. <gasps> and I know it's not always easy either. You know, I know that a lot of times people will say, you know, I, I had a story to share, but I just, I couldn't quite just do it right now. So I know that you're going to be sharing stories. Um, about Margie any time that you get together later today when you're together and um, really for the rest of your lives you'll be talking about her and sharing those stories. Um, but before I move on I just want to see if anybody else wants to wants to share anything. All right, thank you. I would invite you to stand in honor of the Holy Gospel that we've chosen. It's, um, it's the words of Jesus um, when he was talking to his disciples, and he was talking to them because he knew that he was going to be dying. Um, and so he gave them these words of promise and hope. It's from John chapter 14. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me, he said. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, would I have told you? But I go to prepare a place for you. 
so that where I am, you may be also. And he said, and you know the way. You know the way to the place where I'm going. But Jesus' disciple, Thomas, one of his good friends, spoke up. Maybe like we feel sometimes. He said, Lord, how, how can we know where you're going? How can we know the way? And Jesus answered him and answers you and me. I am the way, Jesus said. I am the way. I'm the truth. I am life. This is good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. You know, I just, I want to thank, I want to thank you, Patty. Thank you very much for allowing me to sit with you and your beautiful, gracious mother that day when we were over at Oak Crossing. And, um, and of course, I, if any of you had the experience of, of, if you were able to even get in there to Oak Crossing, um, I had to be carefully screened, of course, before I went in, and I had to go through all the 99 questions. I had to put on the special PPE. I had to be instructed in all the guidelines, um, and then I was able to be led to the room um, with Patty and Margie for a sacred time of Holy Communion. That's what Margie wanted. She wanted to receive Holy Communion, and so we did that. Um, we had a service of Holy Communion, um, we said prayers, um, and she asked that we would pray for you, for her family. That's who she wanted the prayers for. So we prayed. And we celebrated that real presence of Jesus in Holy Communion. Unfortunately, we have so many barriers um, between us today. But Jesus, our good shepherd, doesn't allow any barriers to separate us from him and from his promises and from his eternal love. And he's been with Margie every day. From her birth to her death, he is her Alpha and Omega and all those earthly years in between that you shared with her. And last week he was there. Jesus was there to raise Margie from the death in this world to her new life, to live. And Jesus told his disciples when he was with them not to let their hearts be troubled as they face death, but to believe to focus on believing in God, believing in Jesus. That's how we can go through hard things. To believe that Jesus actually prepared a place for Margie, a, a mansion, he said, where she lives with Christ forever. Now, this is a mystery. You know, I've studied this for years. I, don't, I can't say that I understand how this all works but I believe it. I believe Jesus. He's shown me over and over again that he's true to all of his promises. And that's what he promised to Margie. And even when his friend, his close disciple Thomas, questioned the way that this can work, Jesus told him, I'm the way. I'm truth, I'm life. I'm, I'm the one who, through the cross, truly makes life work here and forever. And that's why I am confident today that, that your mom, your grandma, your great-grandma, your cousin, your aunt, your friend, 
This woman that, that everybody falls in love with um, when they meet her, who laughed with you at birthday parties and card parties, who tended her garden and watched her birds, who taught you how to be a good parent and a grandparent because she loves you so much. This woman who walked with her good shepherd through the barriers, through the valley of what's just a shadow of death last week. Because with Christ, her soul has been restored. She's alive now. Where there is no more crying, there's no more sickness, there's no more pain. Only goodness and mercy living in the house of the Lord forever. You can trust that Jesus will be with you wherever you are, too. Your goodbye, your goodbye to Margie came much too quickly. It went so fast. But it is only temporary. It's just a temporary goodbye because of Christ's death. On that old, rugged cross and his resurrection to new life. Because of that, someday you'll all be together again at a party with Margie. And with all the family members, you've all had a lot, a lot of people you've had to say goodbye to. You will celebrate with all of them again. May God's peace and loving comfort be with you all as we listen to another hymn of promise.
God, you brought your people together in the mystical body of your son, Jesus, as our Lord. Give us your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection have died to sin and rise to newness of life. That through the grave, through the gate of death, we will pass with him to our joyful resurrection. And grant to us who are still walking on this earth in our journeys, who walk with our doubts, walk with our faith, walk with our questions, that your Holy Spirit will lead us, guide us, Forgive us. Give us peace. That we can love you and others. Give us a confidence in your loving care that giving our sadness to you, we can trust in your comfort for us. Give us courage and faith that all those who grieve will have the strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy, a certain promise and hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with Margie and all those they love and help us in the midst of the things that we can't really even understand to believe and to trust in the resurrection of the body to everlasting life grant us grace to entrust Margie to your never failing love which has been with her all through this life. And God of grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus, to bring life, to bring immortality to light. And so we give you thanks because in his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death. In his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all who believe. So make us certain that because he lives, we will live. That neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come can ever separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Hear us as we pray, either out loud or just silently in our hearts, the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Margie Ann Hinshaw Minderman Zuberbeer. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints in light. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on Margie and all of you with, with God's love and grace. And may God, as you walk through this life, until you meet again, give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you now to stand in honor of Margie. The family will proceed with Margie first, and then the rest of us will follow, and we'll just go down the stairs and right out into the parking lot, and we'll probably release each other from the back, to the front um, is how we'll do this. So we'll listen for amazing grace. Amazing grace, 
How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed. When Shut